హైట్ అయితే ఐ ఎమ్ డాక్టర్ విఎన్ఎస్ఆర్ వెంకటేశ్వర రావు వర్కింగ్ యాజ్ ఏ అసోసియేటివ్ ప్రొఫెసర్ ఇన్ ఇన్స్టిట్యూట్ ఆఫ్ ఏరోనాటికల్ ఇంజనీరింగ్ హైదరాబాద్ టెన్ సో టుడే ఐ వుడ్ లైక్ టు గివ్ ది టాపిక్ ఆన్ ది బ్యాటరీస్ ఎస్పెషల్లీ సెకండరీ సెల్స్ సో బిఫోర్ గివింగ్ ది సెకండరీ సెల్స్ వాట్ ఈస్ ది battery so battery is nothing but a one of the electrochemical cells which involves the which involves the conversion of a chemical energy into a electrical energy so these batteries are nothing but a devices for the uh, stable power supply sources so these are can be access a direct current sources at a standard voltages at a stable voltages so these batteries are mainly classified into three types so that are primary cells secondary cells and fuel cells so our current topic is the secondary cells but before giving the introduction to the secondary cells we must learn about the what is the classification of primary secondary and fuel cells then only we know the difference between the what is the primary secondary and fuel cells in case of the primary cells the cell reaction is the not reversible in case of the secondary cells cell reaction is reversible what happened in fuel cells fuel cells uh, occurs in the oxidation of the fuel takes place oxidation of the fuel will uh, takes place that means in case of the primary cells that cell reaction is not reversible means only chemical energy converts to a electrical energy but not electrical energy converts into a chemical energy but according to the definition of the electrochemical cells both reactions are possible chemical energy converts to electrical energy and electrical energy Uh, converts into a chemical energy so that conversion of both energies chemical to electrical and electrical to chemical possible in secondary cells that means chemical energy converts to electrical energy electrical energy converts to chemical energy chemical energy these two reactions are possible in case of the secondary cells so it is called as a reversible cells whereas in case of the fuel cells only oxidation of the fuel takes place and the cell reaction is not reversible so this is the main difference between the primary secondary and fuel cells and primary cells can be used as a disposable batteries disposable batteries whereas secondary cells involves in a use more and more times because of the cell reaction is possible that means charging and discharging is possible so based on the charging and discharging we can calculate the percentage of efficiency of the battery percentage of efficiency so that percentage of efficiency is equal to the discharge divided by charging into 100 so this is the the formula for percentage of efficiency that means discharging and consumption of the battery and charging for the requirement of the battery multiplied by 100 this is give the percentage of efficiency based on percentage of efficiency we can choose the secondary cells that is called as reversible cells in case of the fuel cells there is no charging and discharging facility only one side reaction is possible and the most important examples of the primary cells are nothing but a lacrange cell and whereas in the case of the secondary cells nothing but a nickel cadmium cells and in case of the fuel cells the examples are the hydrogen oxygen fuel cells so this is about the the basic classification of the batteries before learning about the secondary cells so a secondary cells is nothing but a rechargeable electrolytic cell that converts chemical energy into electrical energy by a reversible chemical reaction by a reversible chemical reaction that means both chemical energy to electrical energy and electrical energy to chemical energy so this based on this phenomena secondary cell is also called as a storage cell or accumulator secondary cell is also called as a storage cell or accumulator 
so recharging means storing electrical energy in the form of chemical energy by passing a current to the dead battery in the direction opposite to the discharge so examples of the uh, secondary cells are the lead accumulator and the lithium ion cells so secondary cells find various applications in the case of the automobile industries calculators and flash lamps so calculators and flash lamps will also comes under category this is of the secondary cells so this is the, the basic diagram of the secondary cells especially lead acid cell so the secondary cells containing the components cathodic component and uh, anodic <coughs> component mainly to component lead acid storage cell why because it is called the lead acid storage cell in the presence of the acidic media nothing but sulfuric acid so this sulfuric acid dissociates into h plus ions and sulfate ions so in the presence of acidic media this the chemical reactions takes place in case of the lead acid storage cell that's why it is called as lead acid storage cell and uh, this is the, the circuit diagram of the lead acid storage cells by passing the current there is a bulb phenomena first component and uh, negative terminal second component and third component is the positive terminal at the center what happens the sulfuric acid in the of the water sulfuric acid present in the water so what are the ionic so ions present in the, the sulfuric water first ion is the lead lead plus two and sulfate ions and h plus ions and hso4 minus ions presence of the lead dioxide so these are the main ionic components present in the sulfuric acid present in the water in the case of the lead acid cell so lead acid storage cell a pile of the secondary cells constitutes accumulator or storage cell a storage cell is one that can operate both as a voltaic cell and as an electrolytic cell that means voltaic cell means forward reaction is possible that means voltaic means forward reaction is possible and also as an electrolytic cell electrolytic cell electrolytic cell means electrical energy converts to a chemical energy voltaic cell means chemical energy converts to a electrical energy that means both forward reaction and backward reaction is possible in case of the lead acid storage cell it has the capacity to receive the electrical energy as well as the supply of electrical energy that means while discharging it acts as a voltaic cell and recharging process it acts as a electrolytic cell that means this, this depends upon the, the percentage of efficiency of a secondary cell nothing but lead acid storage cell in case of the discharging phenomena it can act as a voltaic cell and uh, recharging process can act as a electrolytic cell so that means chemical energy converts to electrical energy and electrical energy converts to a chemical energy <coughs> So, what is the lead acid storage in cell representation? That means lead present in the 20% of sulfuric acid solution and lead dioxide. That means 20% sulfuric acid, how to prepare 20% sulfuric acid? That means 20 ml of the sulfuric acid added to the 80 ml of the water molecules to get 20% of the sulfuric acid solution so this is the preparation for the 20 percent sulfuric acid solution it contain a single pair of electrodes give a potential of two volts so that means the emf of the lead acid storage cell should be equal to the two volts and the storage cell containing a total of how many pairs six pairs of the series in giving a 12 volts so that means totally the storage cell containing the six pairs each pair gives a two volts and six pairs gives a 12 volts that means 6 into 2 finally you get a 12 volts of the lead acid storage battery so what are the reactions occurs at the lead acid storage cell reactions what happens at anode the lead sulfate to give a lead sulfate phenomena lead can act as a cathode and sulfate can act as a anode and combine to give a lead sulfate with the oxidation of the two electrons and potential is e is equal to 0 0.36 volts whereas at cathode what happens this lead dioxide reacts in the presence of the sulfuric acid media 
by absorbing the the last two electrons from the above reactions to get lead sulfate with two moles of water molecules in the liquid media and the potential of the this reaction is nearly equal to the 1.64 volts finally what happens at cell reactions that means discharging phenomena discharging phenomena in case of discharging phenomena it can act as a voltaic cell so lead plus lead dioxide to give a sulfate molecules to give two moles of lead sulfate with the two moles of water molecule and the potential of the this discharging phenomena should be equal to the 20 volts and the cell reaction at charging phenomena charging phenomena means it can act as a electrolytic cell electrolytic cell that means two moles of lead sulfate with two, two moles of water molecule to give a lead lead dioxide in the presence of the four h plus molecule and the two sulfate molecules it is the reaction takes place at electrolytic cell so this is the, the basic diagram of a lead acid storage cell it contains how many components first one is the positive terminal placed at the top and the negative terminal also placed at the top of and by the side of the positive terminal and the third one is the vent components and the fourth one is the cell connectors and the fifth one is the positive electrode that means made with lead dioxide pbo2 lead dioxide and the bottom we observe the negative electrode that is nothing but a lead formed as pb so and the bottom cell dividers are present and uh, electrolytic solution is also very very important for occurring the chemical reactions dilute sulfuric acid dilute sulfuric acid that means especially we use a for normal to 20% of the sulfuric acid and the product casing will be very very important so totally how many components present in the lead acid storage cell nine components present in the lead acid storage cell so this is the, the basic diagram of the lead acid storage cell and what are the use of lead acid storage cell so this is mainly applicable to the electrical vehicles like scooters mopeds most probably these are used in electrical vehicles and in case of the laboratory purpose laboratory purpose means special after in the dental labs chemical labs most probably used as a lead acid storage cells and gas engine ignition is also very very important it is also used in hospitals and telephone exchanges broadcasting stations trains and automobile industries so this is about the use of the lead acid storage cells so this is the first uh, cell of the secondary cells lead acid storage cells once again we see what are the reactions chemicals observed in the lead acid storage cells so first of all secondary cells secondary cells are nothing but a rechargeable electric uh, cells that means chemical energy converts into electrical energy and electrical energy converts into chemical energy so this is also nothing but a storage cells and the accumulators so recharging means storing electrical energy in the chemical form and by current dead battery in the direction of the opposite discharge so examples of the this second cells lead accumulator and lithium ion cells so you now we follow the lead accumulator and it is most probably absorbed in the automobiles calculators and flash lamps so the second cells containing the the basic diagram nothing but a mainly two components cathode and anode which are present in the sulfuric acid media one of the strong acid so because of the, the strong acid media this is also called as lead acid storage cells and in the case of the aqueous media how many ions present in the uh, this sulfuric acid present in the water so sulfate ions and h plus ions lead ions and hydrogen sulfate ions and lead dioxide ions which are present in the aqueous media of sulfuric acid including both positive terminal and negative terminals so the negative terminal can be lead and the positive terminal can be connected as a lead dioxide so this constitutes nothing but a storage cell and this storage cell can be acts as a both voltaic cell and electrolytic cell voltaic cell means chemical energy converts to electrical energy electrolytic cells means electrical energy converts into chemical energy that means voltaic cell nothing but discharging purpose electrolytic cell nothing but a charging purpose 
So you see the, the cell representation nothing but 20% sulfuric acid can act as a electrolyte. and lead lead dioxide can act as a two different terminals and in this case the single pair of the electrode gives a two volts single pair of electrode gives a two volts totally this lead dioxide storage cell containing so six pairs so it gives final voltage is six into two totally 12 volts battery 12 volts battery this is the the final emf of a lead acid storage cells <coughs> And it occurs in so many reactions at anode what happens the lead undergoes a oxidation with the potential of 0 0.36 volts. At cathode what happens the reduction reactions takes place to give a resultant product is lead sulfate with the 2 moles of the water molecules with the voltage is 1.64 volts. And finally cell reaction nothing but a discharging phenomena. This discharging phenomena like in the voltaic cell and with volts of 2.0 volts. And this in this case of the secondary the dust storage cells charging capacity is also possible in the case of the charging capacity it can act as a electrolytic cells so this is the the basic output diagram of a lead acid storage cell and it contains how many components totally nine components it includes both positive negative terminals and vent camps cell connectors and positive electrodes nothing but lead dioxide and negative electrode nothing but lead <coughs> cell divide is also needed and a product casing electrolytic solutions these are the totally nine components present in the lead acid storage cell and this is about a uses of lead acid storage cell this is mainly applicable to a electrical vehicles labs gas engine ignitions hospitals telephone exchanges broadcasting stations trains and automobiles so this is about the first secondary cells and we learn about a secondary cells nothing but lithium ionic cells this lithium ion cell is can can be example of a secondary cells it can be recharging phenomena anode is a inter calculated lithium compound such as lead lithium cobalt 3 oxide lead lithium cobalt 3 oxide and the formula of the lithium cobalt 3 oxide is LiCO CO2 LiCO O2. So, cathode is lithium doped graphite. In this case, cathode is lithium doped graphite. The lithium electrolyte consists of a complex lithium compound such as lithium hexafluorophosphate dissolved in an organic solvent such as dimethyl carbonate and provide a lightweight high energy density power sources of a variety of devices. Because of the these physical properties, we can use it as a dimethyl carbonate as a organic solvent lithium hexafluorophosphate complex. So this is about the, the basic diagram of a lithium ion cells. We observe the left side what happens copper is present, right side aluminum is present. So the electrolyte solution takes place in this case anode graphite and cathode lithium cobalt oxides and separator is lithium plates will also observed in the lithium ionic cells. In this case lithium ion battery is example for a secondary cell so that means both the discharging and charging phenomena is also applicable. In case of the discharging what happens there is a separator and electrolytic solution anode is presented right side that means copper current electrode and the cathode presented left side aluminum current collector electrons will be accumulated that means it uh, at what happens at cathode reduction takes place at, at anode what happens oxidation of the electrons takes place in this charging phenomena and uh, charging phenomena also observed cathode presented left side and uh, right side copper current collector will also same like that separator and electrolyte is also present and the lithium metal and the lithium ion also present in this case uh, it is nothing but a charging phenomena discharging and charging phenomena observed in the lithium ion battery. So this is the, the basic diagrams of discharging and charging diagrams. So what are the chemical reactions occurred in the lithium ionic cell reactions at anode what happens undergoes of a lithium oxidation with the loss of the n moles of the electrons because of the, the balance of the lithium present at cathode what happens, what happens lithium cobalt oxide absorbs the that released oxygen set anode and LiCO-CO2 reactions will be takes place and cell reaction is the discharging phenomena and in the same case charging phenomena also applicable. So this will be calculated by the percentage of efficiency of a cell.
so percentage of efficiency is equal to the ratio between the discharge and charge multiplied by 100 so it tells about a, the percentage of efficiency of a cell so in the case of the percentage of efficiency observe the left side graphite anode at the center what happens electrolyte and lithium cobalt oxide will be observed at the cathode at the right side so these are the main lithium ion cell reactions takes place at the lithium cell <coughs> And what are the use of a lithium ion cell? Lithium ion batteries are commonly most probably used in portable electronic devices and electronic vehicles and are growing in popularity for military and aerospace applications. That means portable electronics. Electric vehicles. and popular in military aerospace applications so this is very very important of the lithium ion cell so this lithium ion cells especially today's most members are used in the mobile phones and notebook pcs cameras cam cards mp3 and pdas so used in power tools such as cordless drills sanders saws and variety of garden equipment including whipper snippers and hedge trimmers so secondary non aqueous lithium batteries provide reliable backup power to load equipment in a network environment of telecommunications providers so this is about a uses of lithium ion cell so this is the secondary uh, cell of lithium ion cell once again we see the what are the components and the reactions takes place in the lithium ion cell so this is about the secondary cells of the lithium ionic cells next we discuss about a fuel cells so fuel cells is nothing but a device that converts the chemical energy of a fuel and accident into a electrical energy in the form of a potential that means oxidation of oxidation of fuel takes place so oxidation of the fuel will be takes place unlike secondary battery a fuel cell does not run down on a required charging facility fuel cells working time to very very large and fuel cells are much more efficient than the thermal devices for the power generation this is the the basic properties of a fuel cells are very much more efficient than the thermal devices for the power generation they provide the basis for the pollution free transport in case of the primary cells and secondary cells is there effluents coming from the cells but in case of the fuel cells this can be acts as a basis for the pollution free transport and if a number of fuel cells are piled in series, they can generate the hundreds of the kilowatts of the power and supply a whole neighborhood phenomena. That means it provides up to kilowatts of the power, kilowatts of the power. And what are the examples of the fuel cells? Nothing but hydrogen, oxygen, fuel cells. Hydrogen, oxygen, fuel cells. Hydrocarbon, oxygen, fuel cells. And alcohol, oxygen, fuel cells. And PM, PM fuel cells that means totally how many types four types hydrogen oxygen fuel cells and second one is the hydrogen carbon fuel cells hydrogen carbon oxygen fuel cells and third one is the alcohol oxygen fuel cells and fourth one is the PM fuel cells these four types are very very important in case of the fuel cells out of that uh, we discuss about the hydrogen oxygen fuel cells for today's class so this is the main diagram of a hydrogen uh, oxygen fuel cells in case of the left side what is present in anode it can act as a anodic catalyst and the right side what happens cathodic catalyst that means there is a anode to cathode what happens hydrogen ion cell will be transport takes place that means at left side hydrogen fuel can act as a anode and right side oxygen from air can act as a cathode finally the combination of this hydrogen and oxygen to give a water molecule so by the combination of the this hydrogen and oxygen follows the stoichiometry nothing nothing but balancing of the chemical reaction 2h2 plus o2 gives us a 2h2o 
so this is the balancing of the chemical reaction so the byproduct is the h2o which is most probably used for a astronauts in uh, their aerospace especially rockets in case of the rockets hydrogen oxygen fuel cell can be acts as a very very important phenomena so in case of the hydrogen oxygen fuel cells what happens the anode is the hydrogen and the cathode is the oxygen at the anode what happens hydrogen undergoes a oxidation phenomena with the loss of the how many electrons four electrons at the cathode what happens reduction takes place and to get a two h2o molecules and the by product is the main product is the water molecules with the transfer of the h plus ions from anode to cathode and what are the applications of the fuel cells especially stationary fuel cells are used in the commercial industrial and residential primary and backup power generation phenomena stationary fuel cells most probably used in the commercial industrial and residential primary and backup power generation phenomena fuel cells are very useful as power sources in remote locations such as spacecraft remote weather stations large parks communication centers and rural locations including research stations and certain military applications so this is very very in the case of the fuel cells and combined heat and power fuel cell systems are used in the to generate both electricity and heat for the homes office building and factories that means combined heat power fuel cell systems fuel cell electric vehicles such as automobiles buses fork lifts motorcycles aeroplanes boats and submarines so this is nothing but a fuel cell electronic vehicles and used in emergency power systems to provide backup resources in a crisis or when regular systems fails this is the very very important application of the fuel cell so this is about the applications of the fuel cell so once again we see the fuel cells so fuel cells mainly occurs in the the oxidation of the fuel takes place the oxidation of the fuel will be takes place it gives a fuel cell phenomena that means the chemical energy converts to a electrical energy and electrical energy converts to a chemical energy that means only in the case of the fuel cells so far out reaction is possible there is no reversible reaction that means chemical energy converts into a electrical energy that is also mainly involves in the oxidation of the fuel takes place <coughs> that means uh, unlike a secondary battery it fuel cell does not run down the required charging phenomena that means fuel cells uh, working time is very very large that means large time batteries last time batteries so that means these fuel cells are much more efficient than the thermal devices for the power generation that means in case of the power generation fuel cells are much more efficient than the thermal devices <coughs> and uh, what are the advantages so this can be acts as a pollution free pollution free batteries and uh, it produces nearly kilowatts of the power and what are the various examples of a fuel cells first one is the hydrogen oxygen fuel cells and represented by hydrogen oxygen and second one is the hydrogen carbon oxygen fuel cells and third one is the alkyl oxygen fuel cells and fourth one is the pm fuel cells out of all that most probably used fuel cell is the hydrogen oxygen fuel cell hydrogen oxygen fuel cell and uh, this is the basic uh, diagram for a hydrogen oxygen fuel cell at uh, what happens left side hydrogen gas will be present and right side uh, oxygen will be present at left side uh, hydrogen undergoes a oxidation phenomena at right side uh, oxygen will takes way reduction phenomena that means finally the combination of hydrogen and oxygen to give a two moles of uh, water molecules and uh, this is the the cell reactions takes place in case of the fuel cells it anode what happens the hydrogen can access a anode and oxygen can access a 
cathode hydrogen can act as a anode and oxygen can act as a cathode and uh, what happens at anode two moles of the hydrogen undergoes oxidation with the releasing of the four h plus molecules with the four uh, electrons and uh, at cathode what happens that released four electrons uh, received by the oxygen to get a 2H2O molecule. So that means the product is the mainly 2H2O. This is very, very useful product for the astronauts in spacecrafts vehicles. <coughs> And what are the applications of the fuel cells? Mainly stationary fuel cells are used in the commercial, industrial and uh, residential primary backup power generation. So that means in case of the backup power generation, you know, industry and uh, domestic our nothing but resin shells and fuel cells are very useful as power sources in remote locations such as spacecrafts and remote weather stations, large parks and communication centers, rural locations including research stations, research stations and like a military department. So it should be mainly used in the military applications also. And uh, combined heat and power fuel systems are used in uh, to generate uh, both electricity and heat for uh, homes, office building and uh, factories. So fuel cell electric vehicles such as uh, automobiles, <coughs> forklifts and uh, motorcycles, aeroplanes and uh, boats, submarines. So all of these applications comes under category of the fuel cell electric vehicles and used in emergency power systems to provide backup resources in a crisis or when regular systems fails. It is very very important application for the fuel cells. Even in system fails, it can act as a emergency power systems. So this is about a secondary cells including both lithium cells and fuel cells lead acid storage cells thank you like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates